Hello, hello everybody. Um, this is going to be a new type of video for me. This video is with no backdrop, uh, no table. Instead of staring at my pants and my lap, I just took an old towel and threw it over my lap. So at least uh, you don't have a crotch shot basically for this video. So this video is going to be on coin manipulation, um, coin walking or coin rolling. Uh, in particular, uh, to start it off, this is what I am talking about. I'm sure most of you, if you ever, if you clicked on this video, you know what this is. Uh, disclaimer right out front, I don't claim to be an expert at this, as you can see. Um, I'm not an expert because an expert is like magician quality and can make this look very fluid and almost magical. Uh, with enough practice, anybody can do that. Uh, here's a few reversals. just to show what this video is going to be talking about. Now, uh, this video is on uh, how to really learn this and what you can develop from uh, your initial uh, practice run, so to speak. Uh, so to start off, um, I got into this uh, style of coin manipulation years and years ago, uh, back around 1994, 1995, I was nine or 10 years old and I saw a movie called Tombstone in it. Um, Val Kilmer, uh, playing Doc Holliday, the opening scene shows him manipulating a silver US 1800s half dollar while he's playing a poker game. And I thought it looked really cool, and I wanted to learn how to do it. So I self-taught back in the mid-90s, uh, as most of you in your 30s and 40s will be well aware of. Uh, we didn't have social media and YouTube and all this stuff to look up tips and tricks on learning things. So I tried to just self-learn it. Uh, I'm right-handed, so originally I learned on my right hand, and I used quarters at that young age. Now, when I first started, because I had no resources, I was able to get the coin there. And then I had no clue what to do with it. I couldn't get it to go back, really, without it looking super sloppy and falling. And I had no clue how uh, Val Kilmer in the movie was pulling off the underhand pass to come back around and do it again. So I always, just as a kid, got stuck at the end and I literally used my left hand to pull it and feed it back to the start. And it was uh, super lame. Um, I gave up on it because I didn't think I was ever going to be able to do it like I saw in the movies. And then I saw it again in a few other movies. Uh, a few of you, uh, stateside, Canada, um, English movies. I'm not sure if they're known all around the world. But uh, Constantine with Keanu Reeves and Pirates of the Caribbean uh, with Johnny Depp playing Jack Sparrow. And both of those characters in both of those movies around 2000, I think 4, 2005 when they came out. Uh, they both showcased a moment in the movie where, or multiple moments in the movie, and in one case for Constantine, where coin rolling uh, is shown, or coin walking. And then I kind of was like, oh, I would love to do that, love to do that again. And uh, at the time, I had a buddy, an acquaintance, uh, a friend of a friend who was into street magic and was an aspiring uh, street magician shout out you'll probably never see this video but uh, shout out to David Graves um, he never went professional but um, he had some cool tricks and one of them not really a trick more of a flourish I believe it's called was his ability to walk coins across the back of his hand and make it just look magical so um, back in my early 20s I'd asked him because I, I brought up that I always wanted to learn it and I was like look man uh, how did you do that? And he gave me a few tips. I'm going to share those tips with you now. First off, you want to start with a smaller coin. Uh, if you have small to medium sized hands, I'm going to say starting off with a quarter or a 50 pence or half dollar. Um, that range of coin size is going to be your best bet. If you can find a foreign coin that's about the size of a half dollar, a little bit thicker, thicker coins kind of lend themselves to learning this. Uh, it's just easier to grab it on the next knuckle and pivot it because it is thicker. Uh, whereas with the thinner coins, as you can see, that is definitely thinner. With the thinner coins, it, it really doesn't, um, it, they don't lend themselves super well, not only 
because they are thinner and you have to put a little bit more oomph into turning it around the knuckle um, but they're typically lightweight and a little bit of weight does help out in this type of situation so um, this is going to be a long video, by the way. This is going to be one of my highlight videos on a skill toy. Um, so back to my disclaimer, you know, I'm not a professional at it, but I do have some tips and tricks that I believe I can pass along if you wanted to get into this style of uh, coin manipulation. Now, here we have uh, two coins, uh, old school for all of you back over in Europe, uh, UK, the old school British 50 pence. I know the new stuff does not look like this and is nowhere near the same size. So the old ones from the mid 90s back are great my favorite actually you can tell by the wear the dings dings and dents on this it's my most used um if you're a state side a silver half dollar for the weight is ideal but really any half dollar or um silver quarter or standard quarter you could learn on but the lighter coins are a little bit trickier to learn with to be honest even the quarters unless you got really small hands uh once you learn this with the smaller coin of choice that suits you uh, it is much easier to transition up to larger things uh, here we have a around square uh, mini dead eye this is the stainless steel because I like the heavier I just like it a little bit heavier my hands are super sweaty I'm outside so uh, I'm having some difficulties here as I drop it uh, the stepped edition And this is a uh, Shire Post Mint, I believe it's called. Um, and this is super heavy and super thick and more about the size of a uh, traditional silver dollar, except much heavier and thicker, of course. Um, usually I do quite well with this, and I'm finding out that sitting back here and trying to shoot a video, my hands get sweaty uh, with super sweaty hands and that high polish. Not quite as easy to control, but still feels incredibly well during manipulation or incredibly good during manipulation. So anyways, um, tips that he gave me. You're going to want to start off with a smaller coin. And honestly, the, the focus should be on one direction and getting that down pat before you start doing reversals. And the trick to the end here is when you get to the end, you kind of want to release the tension just a little bit. And be prepped and ready to receive it with your thumb. You want to cross over with your thumb and be prepped and ready. Sometimes it'll fall right into place, but sometimes you got to give it like a little boost, like a sliding boost with your pinky. When you get it here, you're going to want to balance it on that finger and just kind of slide it right along the underside of your hand. You don't even really have to touch your hand. Matter of fact, it would be ideal if you can do it without touching your hands because uh, touching your hand is going to cause drag see and you'll actually bind yourself up so um the less that you can touch your hands on that transition the better i'm trying to move slow and not only hold the camera but hold my hand in camera so that's what's all the shaking and you're going to want to learn that one direction now he gave me a tip when you're starting out, you're going to want to stay as close to a closed hand as possible. And with that smaller coin, you're going to start off real slow. You're going to be like, man, this is impossible. You're going to start off real slow and try to keep that hand pinched. Matter of fact, I'm so used to doing this now that it almost feels weird to do it like this. But this is how I learned. Indeed, how I learned. You're going to want to try to keep that hand in. And closed once you get it down and start to gain a little bit of speed and control um, you can indeed put a little bit more spread in your fingers and speed it up you're gonna want to to get that speed right and when you get comfortable to a point in one direction doing that with your smaller start coin your quarter um, the Canadian quarters, American quarters, the half dollars, 50 pence, older 50 pence coins. Um, or if you got large hands, you could even start out with a half dollar, silver half dollar, or even a Morgan silver dollar if you've got big old bear mitts, um, or bear paws, I should say. Um, where was I? Sorry. 
Uh, once you get it down with these smaller coins, you are then able to transition. Well, first off, you are then able to start working on your reversals, which is literally just stepping your hand back down. Um, you're going to notice that I'm not going to the pinky. I'm not an expert at this yet, like I said at the beginning. So I'm still trying to work on keeping that fluid to the pinky and all the way back. For now, I settle with just doing the three little flip overs, ending at the pinky, and then bringing it right back. I'll even lay it down flat towards the pinky, but I bring it right back. Anyways, um, getting some nice foot shots in there with the sunburn on the flip flops. Yeah. Uh, totally crazy video for my, uh, compared to my typical videos. I got some other crazy videos coming up too, where I'm going to do a uh, totally different shooting method and see what you guys think. But anyways, um, so yeah, the closed, <clears throat> closed fist, um, my recommendations on coins, like I said, the 50 pence, the half dollar quarter, I'm getting repetitive. I know if you can get the thicker coins, uh, the old, uh, German five mark coins, the old Italian 500, uh, 500 lire or lira coins. Uh, those are the German and the Italian silver, old silver Canadian coins, half dollars and whatnot, old silver, uh, the more weight, the better. Honestly, if you're doing a regular standard modern quarter, clad quarter, it's so lightweight that it's going to be difficult. If you're going to start with a quarter with smaller medium hands to learn and go that small, then I highly recommend tracking down and spending a few dollars and getting a silver quarter because that extra weight does help keep it centered on finger. Um, the less weight, the more it wants to drift and slide. I'll tell you that. I've tried aluminum coins and clad coins and everything, and as that weight lightens it wants to kind of slide around uh the more like this is a great example this this is a coin even though it's a half dollar where because it's so light you see how it kind of wants to go a little off course kind of go its own way occasionally um that's going to be with those light coins but anyways uh what am i missing here um once you get those down, you can transition to larger coins, Morgan Silver Dollars. If you're into skill toys and you're aware of the dead eyes, uh, you can transition this over to the minis. I've tried it with the full size. I can't really quite get it. Um, it's just a little bit too big in diameter, not so much width. Um, I like the minis, and I've tried it with the hollows, and it's like super difficult, so... You can, if you can pull it off, man, I tip my hat to you. Ooh, I got rain clouds moving in and thunder. Um, but the stepped and uh, standard minis for the Dead Eyes are great. They're actually, uh, by design, they look pretty good while they're going back and forth across the fingers, especially when it's really bright and sunny out. You know, the sun plays off of it really well. Um, you get that good, cool reflection on this, and it looks really cool dancing across the hands. Uh, for those of you that have um, silver dollar sized um, worry coins, so to speak, or whatnot, or uh, I forget what they're called, but like token coins that uh, guys are carrying nowadays in their pocket, uh, you can transition after learning with the smaller coin. Again, you can transition up to these bigger, heavier, I think this weighs like 32 grams or something like that. It's a big old chunk and beast, and it's roughly about the size of a Morgan silver dollar. We're talking a substantial increase in size compared to the half dollar. Uh, do not start off with these large coins. That was my mistake. I tried jumping right into uh, full size half dollar, lightweight, and Morgan silver dollars, and I was like, the spread that you have to get on your fingers is what's going to cause that, that wobble, that sliding, that falling. Uh, start small, start tight, and work your way up. Once you get it down with a small coin, again, it is much easier to jump right up. Uh, for me, I didn't even have to start. When I was a kid, uh, quarters were great. Uh, I have medium-sized hands as an adult now, so honestly, the half-dollar size was great for me. For most of you, for most of you guys or gals out there that have medium or medium-large-ish or longer hands, uh, the half-dollars should be great to learn with. Or the 50 pence, I should say, or half dollars should be great to learn with. If you've got really small hands on, for a guy or um, petite, dainty hands for a lady, I would suggest a heavier quarter or just slightly smaller coin than these half dollar coins. 
Um, if you have really large hands, you're going to want heavy half dollar or a Morgan right out the gate. Uh, just because you're going to have a lot of finger to cover. The width of your finger, you know, wider finger, you're going to need a little bit more coin to go around. So, um, I'm not sure if I'm missing anything in this video. If y'all learned anything, the sun is fading rapidly. I'm losing light, and I feel like I talked about this enough. Uh, again, uh, you know, just a uh, shout out to a, an old acquaintance of mine that gave me some tips. And although he gave those tips to me uh, 12, gee, holy moly, 12 to 15 years ago, you know, uh, as of a little over a year I decided to relearn how to do this. I cannot do it with my right hand due to injuries um, anymore. So I learned from scratch with my left using his tips and tricks. And I worked my way up. I can do it with Morgans, Ikes, uh, different size, thicknesses, weights for larger coins. Pretty much any half dollar size coin. And the mini dead eyes are at. Uh, this is kind of like the creme de la creme. When, uh, when I really want to enjoy my time with it, you know, I break out something like this just because they, they're so gorgeous. And they're really designed for manipulation, so what better coin to use? To learn with, a little bit difficult. For you people that are just wanting to get into this, again, to learn with, going with these larger coins, a little bit difficult. Um, I would get used to it with something small and a little bit thinner. Before jumping, oh, and just to show you why I like the Dead Eye Minis, they are almost exactly the same size, just much thicker as these here. So, almost identical. So, uh, excellent manipulation or skill coins, specifically for manipulation, to transition over to after you get the basics down now on the reversals i'll bring that up real quick um again you, you really if you want to get this looking nice your best bet is to hone the one direction and get good with that i made the mistake of not honing and perfecting the one direction i kind of got antsy and wanted to start going do reversals i probably messed up by doing that to be honest because now i'm not particularly super fluid in any direction or with all fingers going in reversals but you know, practice makes perfect. Uh, my buddy had said that he had been doing it for years before he had gotten to the level that he was at. Um, I watched a documentary where another magician went over tips and tricks on different coin manipulations, and he talked about this. And he put 10 years into uh, coin walking to make it look as beautiful as he had it looking. So, uh, you know, it's not something you're going to pick up in a week. And if you do, then you have amazing dexterity and excellent choice in coin right out of the gate. Uh, you know, you're probably looking at six months to a year with fair amount of practice with one of these types of coins before you're getting really good. Um, if you can dedicate time solid to one individual thing that you want to learn, and this is it, coin walking, I'd say probably, you know, three to six months, you can have it down pretty good. Uh, for those of you that know me, I jump all over the place. Beglery, coins, hollows, dead eyes, standard coins, uh, check key, my newest and most favorite thing. Um, knuckle rollers. So I don't dedicate any, t like 100% of my time to any in particular thing. I learn bit by bit, jumping all over the place. So there you go, 20 minute video. I hope to God I didn't screw this up and that you obtained something useful from this video. Um, a few tips on coins, or at least roughly those size. Uh, if you're in a different country and you're watching this and you're like, I have no access to coins like that, um, look up uh, British 19, 90, 50 pence coin to get the dimensions and the weights. Or you can look up um, a good example would be, say, 1963 American half dollar, which is going to be almost the same weight, slightly larger, a little bit thinner, but still great starting points for your standard medium average size hands. So, <sighs> sorry. This was the craziest video I've done yet as far as like setup and sloppiness. Love, peace, and chicken grease. Till next time.